the main unit of the Power Lab is an interface between the data you want to collect in the world and the computer on which you save the data. There are 16 separate inputs or channels and one output which goes to the computer. On top of the main box are two separate EMG amplifiers and stimulators. They each have one input that comes from two separate muscles, meaning we can record from up to four muscles at the same time. There's also a stimulator cable, which allows you to stimulate people's nerves and muscles electrically. This is safe to put on humans, as shown by the little human sign. And that means that the, the electrical stimulus is isolated from the, the mains electricity. To turn the power lab on, press the switch at the back on the left. It will whir and flash for a few seconds and then a solid blue and solid yellowy green light show when it's ready. Do not use the box if the lights are flashing. A channel records a single stream of data, for example a single muscle or a single vibration or a light. On the far left of the box is a trigger signal. And this shows you when another computer is sending a signal to the power lab. There are two outputs which can be used to control or send signals to other devices, including the electrical stimulators. There are 16 input channels. Channels 1 and 2 are for the hand grip force monitors. One is blue and left, two is red and right. Channels 3, 4, 5 and 6 are for the EMG data. They connect the power lab to the EMG amplifiers and receive the processed EMG data. As much as possible we keep all these channels fixed so that we can use the same setups for many different experiments. So don't unplug anything without asking everyone else. Channels 7, 8, 9 and 10 are used to record the triggers sent to and from the TMS machines so that we know exactly when TMS occurred. Channels 11 to 16 are used to record when signals turn on and off, for example LED lights or sounds or vibrations during experiments. You'll see there are lots of different coloured labels on the cables and the boxes around the lab. This is to help avoid misconnections and confusions during experiments when you might have to plug things in and unplug things multiple times. For example, on the EMG boxes, there is a blue box and a yellow box. The blue box connects to the two blue channels, channels three and four on the power lab and the yellow box connects to yellow channels 5 and 6. Similarly, there are yellow, green, red and black cables that connect to the TMS machines. If you follow the connecting cables from the blue box, the EMG cables, you'll end up with the blue electrodes. And this colour coding system is used as much as possible in the lab. There are some books, guides, websites and a CD to explain how to use the equipment. So if you're in any doubt at all, do some research. Once you've turned on the Power Lab, you can go to the middle computer and open Lab Chart Software. When it's opening up, it searches for the Power Lab and any other devices that are installed. So if it fails at this stage, uh, turn the power lab on again or check the USB cable. When lab chart opens, you'll have a screen showing all 16 channels. 
Now you can start recording from all of these if you want. Just go to the top right, click Start, and then you'll see the data coming in from all channels at the same time. Most of these channels won't mean anything um, unless you've got something meaningful connected or are doing something with an experiment. On the first two channels, the signal is given in newtons rather than millivolts. That's because it's connected to the hand grip force monitors or dynamometers. If you pick up one of the dynamometers and give it a squeeze, you'll see then that the grip device shows a nice signal in the data, channels one or two, one for left, two for right. You can also see some electrical noise in the EMG channels if you move the electrodes around, which creates a small electrical signal in the wires just from static electricity or motion. And this will be picked up and shown on lab chart. Now I'm going to narrate a high speed version of basic interactions in lab chart. Opening lab chart, checking all the channels, maximizing, start recording. Looks good. Just change the color of the first two channels to match the color of the hand grip devices. Stop that, go to channel settings, change the channel name, uh, sorry, change the channel number, change the channel name, something meaningful for each channel. Take a look at the colours again, just make them a bit more compatible, so reds are for rights and blues are for lefts. Change the sampling rate to 4 kilohertz, which is good for MEPs. Um, you can't change the range on the grip force machines, but you can change the range on all the other channels. So set to 10 millivolts, which is good for EMG data. Now EMG data, uh, you need a high pass filter of about 10 hertz and a low pass of about 500. Now you could, you can see a lot of noise there and you can get rid of that noise by clicking the mains filter. But I think that's a bad idea as this might show you. So when you when you create data in those channels you actually get bigger noise as well as bigger signals so it takes a while for the mains filter to work. So my preference is not to use a mains filter. Just change the second EMG channel, the same settings, 500 Hz and 10 Hz high pass. Now start recording again you get slightly different data. So you see the two grip force channels and the two EMG channels at the bottom and they're just recording noise at the moment. Let's pull down the screen divider to maximize the first channel. And this is the grip force channel for the left hand and there I am squeezing away creating some nice grip forces. Let's um, change the scale by setting the scale right click on the left axis set the scale to 400 minus 10. There we are that's nice you can see the whole thing now you can use the auto scale just done there that will set the scale to the maximum. You can zoom in to a, an individual peak like this and click the zoom window at the top um, and then by moving the cursor around you can see the values of the data at each point on the graph. The menus on the bottom right, uh, the little buttons, they can uh, expand or contract the horizontal scale which is really useful to see earlier data or later data. And then <clears throat> um, some other neat stuff which I don't use very much but this is the spectrograph view. You can view the current frequencies of all the data that's coming in and if it's motor data that you're recording then frequencies of 5 to 15 hertz are usually quite strong. And that's it. You can save the data as a lab chart data file. I'm just calling it test data here. Or you can also export the data to a text file. That's a larger format but it can be read by any other basic text editor. So this is the preferred format for exporting. You should always save the data as a lab chart data file first because that preserves some of the functions. And then reload the data and there it is. The end. Feel the